Okay, see Lindelof videos. Implicit differentiation at a given point with your TI Inspire cast. This is actually really easy. This is the great thing. If you're going to be using this on an exam, including the AP Cal exam, they are, there's no way they're going to expect that your calculator can do all of this for you. This is going to be an enormous time savings. So I hope that you invest some time in getting good at this, that you practice this a bunch of times, that you copy these keystrokes. Um, and also, if as we're doing this, if you're like, oh, you could do that easier by adding this, it would be really cool if you would tell me so I can help everybody improve. All right, ready? Let's go. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the calculator section. So I just went to my home screen, I hit calculator, and I'm where you are. And now I'm going to do this. To use implicit differentiation, there's two ways that you can do it with your calculator. The first way you can do it is to say, is to go to the menu, choose calculus, go to calculus, scroll down to implicit differentiation, and there it is. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to find the implicit derivative of this function. And the function that I'm going to use is x cosine y is equal to 1. So x times, be careful, you use this multiplier. So if you ever get back the message on your calculator, implied multiplication, it's saying that it's confused, it's having a hard time figuring out if you mean something to be a single symbol, two pieces making up a single symbol, or if you intend to multiply. So it wants clarification, so I'm going to provide that here. Of cosine, so I'm going to take cosine y, so of cosine y, And then in my equation, the whole thing was set equal to 1, so I'm going to set that equal to 1. Now, this is what's important. Remember that when we have implicit differentiation, we're differentiating with respect to x and y, right? We need the, from the ordered pair that we're going to use, we need the x and the y value. So I want this in terms of x and in terms of y, and that's what that comma x comma y means. Hit enter, and there's that implicit derivative. Now, if that's all they wanted, that's great. But what if they wanted to know what's the derivative at the point possibly, um, at the point maybe 2 comma pi thirds? So this is what I would do. So I realize they want that. So what this is what I might do. I go up here to this. I would just arrow up. When this is highlighted, hit enter, and there it is again. Now, Here's two ways that you can do this. I'll show you this way with this problem and the, and the second way with the second problem. So the first way you could do this is, after you've copied this, to say, hit control and then the equal sign. This is the such that bar, right? So it's such that, type in x is equal to 2, because I said we had the point 2 comma pi thirds. So the x value would be 2, so x is equal to 2. Here's the space bar. Space, type in the word and. Check this out, a and D, it recognizes that, hit the space bar again, and y is equal to pi thirds. So pi is here, so pi divided by 3. And if you hit enter, bang, there's your answer. That's really, really good. And if that's not sinking in how great that is, that is absolutely amazing that it can do that. Now, this is what happened. I, when I solved this problem myself, I didn't get this. I got the answer 1 over 2 square roots of 3. I said, 1 over 2 square roots of 3. How did I get that wrong? Am I wrong or is the calculator wrong? Then I realized I can ask my calculator. So this is just kind of a side note here. I'm going to test this. I'm going to hit control division. And the answer I got when I solved this by hand was 1 over 2 times the square root of 3. Now, you see the answer that the calculator got. So I'm a little bit confused. So I move the cursor over. I hit the equal sign. And then I'm going to ask the calculator, are these the same thing? So I'm going to take control square root 3 over 6. Because remember, this is the answer. When I did this by hand, I got this answer. The calculator gets this answer. And I want to know who's right. And we're both right. These are equal. So that's, this is a really good tip when you're taking the multiple choice part. You're, you're scanning the answers like, oh, hell, their, none of their answers match mine. Well, maybe your answer is in different terms than theirs. If you see one that you think is your answer, set your answer equal to theirs and hit enter. And if it's true, it'll tell you. Okay? So I just thought that might be a little bit helpful for you. Uh, that won't always work, especially if there's rounding involved because of rounding errors. But oftentimes that will work. So that's something to try. Look, the other way that I could have done the same thing is this. Remember, I already copied this thing at the top, right? So there's a copy of this thing already. I think I can hit Control-V and get another version of it. 
and there it is. So remember when I when I arrowed up over top of this and it highlighted, right? And then I hit enter and it brought it here. When I did that, it created the copy. So what I've done is this. I want to show you another way that you can do this instead of using this terminology is that you could take this version and hit control store and you could store this as f of x comma y, right? Hit enter. It's pretty anticlimactic. At first you're like, well, what did that give me? But check this out. You can this is the other way you could have done this is you could take, well, what is f of two comma pi thirds? And I got the same answer. So just a different way of doing that. Either way works fine. Look, I hope this is really helpful, and I hope that you're going to go to your textbook or to the workbook that your professor or your teacher has assigned you and just try a bunch of these. I'm telling you that the AP exam was written for this, these type of problems that take a lot of time, and you're going to be able to get back a lot of your time just by using this. Um, and I'm going to ask you again. I'm begging you. If you see this and you're like, Charlie, there's an easier keystroke here you could have used. Tweet, share that with me, and I promise all the keystrokes I find from other people, I'll share them with you. Hey, if you haven't already subscribed, please do, and your comments are always welcome. Thanks for watching.